morning guys and welcome to another vlog as promised I am gonna try and do these once a month I am doing this one a week earlier than what I had actually planned because I do have a couple of things on this week that I wanted to share with you and some new things I've also received so I'm bringing this out to you at the end of January so I am all nice and refreshed after our holiday. We did have to make a few little changes there because of weather conditions. We were originally meant to go up to Harvey Bay, which is about four and a half hours north of us. But because of all the rain that they'd had, a lot of the roads were blocked off and we didn't want to take that chance of being able to get up there and not being able to get back home. So, and plus we didn't want to take any of the food that um, was there for the locals because when the roads are blocked having lived up north myself I know how hard it is to get food up north to locals so we didn't want to go into a sort of seaside town where food was probably pretty scarce anyway and take that resource from them so we decided that we would go to Harvey Bay later on in the year and put some you know tourist money back into the economy then but we decided to alter our plans and we went back down to Stanthorpe which is about a three and a half hour drive south west of us and it's absolutely beautiful out there we really really enjoy it if you're following along with me on instagram i probably bombarded everybody with the um the stories um of the things that we were up to there's very very limited phone and internet access out there which is really nice because once you're away from the main area where we had internet at the um, place we were staying um, the phone was just silent so we didn't have we weren't constantly um, checking it to see notifications and stuff it was just so nice and then when we got back to our little resort we stayed at Ridge Mill um, Ridge Mill Estate Winery in some cabins um, when we got there they do have internet access but it's not strong enough for downloading videos and that sort of thing it was just strong enough for me to answer some messages and a couple of emails and that sort of thing so we really did have a very relaxing time out there we got back um, on the Thursday I believe it was yep Thursday and I opened the shop up for three days and then I've got another three days off so on Monday um, I took hubby to the getaway day spa so he could have a remedial massage as part of his birthday present and then yesterday Tuesday I was doing a few things here on the computer trying to catch up on the emails and that sort of thing Today being Wednesday, the shop should be open, but it is a public holiday. So I was going to go in there and set up a new piece of equipment, but I've decided I'm going to do that tomorrow morning and I'll show you that tomorrow. Um, instead, I've decided to stay home and keep catching up and trying to get myself ahead of where I want to be. I've got videos to edit. I've got posts to write for Patreon um, and I've got my accounting side of things to do as well. So I'm going to continue doing that um, and we'll see where the day takes us I also have to go I actually have to pop out to go and get some bread um, but I'm also going to go and get some caramels hopefully because I have a couple of photos to take this afternoon hopefully it's a pretty dull miserable day out there so hopefully we'll get a little bit of sun so I can start taking some of these photos I need to do so I'm going to get stuck into actually updating my accounting books Wait up. 
look we have our second lot of vanilla pods growing I'll show you the, what I've done with the first lot soon in we go Okay, so I'm needing a bit of a break from sitting in front of the computer. So I've just had a bit of lunch and now I'm out in the old work shed and I'm going to take some photos. Now I still haven't actually quite got around to, um, to doing this area up the way I wanted to. It just got so busy before Christmas that I really didn't have much spare time to do anything in here. I have sorted a few little bits and pieces out and I'm hoping um, throughout February I might really be able to sort this space out. But for now I've got it set up enough to be able to do um, some basic photography. So when you actually come through the door of the shed here, I've got this sort of table set up to do all the photography on at the moment. And I've got my two big lights up there. I do also have a ring light as well. And then across the back, I have used a couple of hooks to put up the the bar that came I had like a stand a t-junction stand to hang my backdrops off of so I've just taken that top bar and I've hung it on the wall so I can still attach my backdrops and then have one on the table as well and then I've got like all my backdrops and everything underneath the table so that is where I do a lot of my sort of photographs. I am hoping to be able to set more sort of stage things up on this wall. There's all my Christmas decorations, haven't put them away yet. And then over on this side, very, very messy. I've got like all where my props are. I'm hoping to actually change that into like a work desk for photography. But as I said, I just haven't quite got around to doing all of that sort of stuff yet. So hopefully we will. It has become a bit of a dumping ground in here. I did have a bit of a clean up trying to get things sorted but as I was cleaning up more and more stuff just kept coming in so I have had to kind of dump boxes in here for now um, but we will get this all sorted out and cleaned up so it becomes a much more usable space I do have some plans this year where I really do need all of this space cleared up but for now what I'm going to do is go and get the photos I need to take some of some candles and some soaps and then I can actually start getting my social media content all um what do you call it all, all well not organized but I basically put mine into a, a scheduler so that all of my content goes out and I don't actually have to worry about it so I need to go and take some of those photos so I can go and get my content scheduler all filled up and ready to go out for the rest of this month so Let's get to taking photos.
Now as tempting as it might be to eat those caramels, sadly I cannot eat them. I did try when I was looking for caramels to find a vegan or a dairy free caramel but I could not find one when I was down at the shop so I guess hubby's going to have to eat those ones. Um, I now have to photograph some soap. So if you've been following along on that sort of vanilla bean journey, I believe it was in 2020 that they actually first came into flower and I said it would take nine months for them to ripen and it did. It literally took nine months for these vanilla beans to show that they were starting to ripen. Um, so in about September, I think it was, September or October, I got to pick, I think it was early September actually, I got to finally pick those vanilla beans and then I had to dry them and it took me about three months, two to three months to get them dry enough. I gave two of them to my mum and she made some Christmas mince meat put, um, pie filling and they were really nice and she did a few other things as well. And then I kept the other seven, which I am making an extract with. So what I've done is I've taken those other seven vanilla beans. I'm not gonna tip it too far, but I took the other seven vanilla beans and I cut them in half I then split them down the middle as well just to open them up a little bit and then I've popped them into my little jar here and then I have poured in a cup of vodka as well and I'm going to have to leave this sit here. It's meant to be a minimum of two months but I've been told if I can leave it for 12 months I will get a really nice vanilla bean extract in here and then I plan on using this extract in some of the Bath and Body products. And I'm hoping, really, really hoping that by the time this one is ready, I can put the new beans into an extract and we'll start getting a sort of rolling um, sort of thing of our vanilla beans. I did buy myself a new vanilla plant for my Christmas present. There's two, two vines in it, so hopefully I'll start getting a lot more vanilla as well. But I can tell you this smells absolutely beautiful. I think it'll be really nice in cooking as well. So I may even split this batch into two, some for um, body products and some for cooking at home. But um, we'll keep an eye on this one. So that is pretty much it for today. Tomorrow we're gonna be back into the workshop and I'm going to show you my new printer that I've bought. So I'll see you then. Good morning, it's a bit dull and miserable out there, but this morning um, hubby and I got up and we took Lucy Lou for her walk. Um, it was really quite nice. It was starting to get humid by the time we got back home. I'm now in the shop. I have got some candles which I made on Sunday which I need to label and put away. I need to get that new printer all set up. And today I'm going to have a bit of a break halfway through the day because I do actually have a doctor's appointment which I've got my fingers crossed is going to go well but I'll explain more about that later. For now I'm going to go and get this printer all set up. Okay, so this is the printer that I've been using for probably about five years now. It's been a bit of a workhorse. It's gone through a pretty rough life. It's a HP Color Laser Jet Pro. Um, the number is a M281FDW. It, we have a love-hate relationship. I love to hate it. It has chewed up so much paper in the past. Um, I've lost a lot of sticker sheets because it doesn't print very well. It has now got to the stage where it actually needs its heat setting drum to be replaced. So when you actually look at the labels it's printing, you can see all those splotchy marks, looks like watermarks. Basically the heat setting drum isn't setting the toner onto the labels. It's one of the reasons I've never actually really printed very heavily colored labels because this printer's never been able to do it very well. Um, I've always had HP printers. I've 
had the occasional one in between where I've had like a Canon or a brother or something and I've hated them so much I basically got them from the store set them up and took them straight back to the store and then got myself another HP printer um, this one here however um, I've had so much grief with it um, that I've actually now been put off HP printers and I decided I would give an Epson a go and the reason being is because down under my desk that one down there is an Epson TM3500 and that is my label printer I will leave links down below in the description box to it and up on the counter here we also have a TMT20 which is a receipt printer and although they were a pain in the bum to set both of these up they do actually work really well so I decided I was going to give a printer like this a go. Now the problem was I needed it to be a laser because I do a lot of the product labels that I actually need to be waterproof. I want them to look nice, clean, clean and crisp. But um, they actually don't do a laser printer. What they do do is an ink called Durabrite. So I was determined to find myself a printer that uses this Durabrite. It works like an inkjet, but unlike a normal inkjet printer, um, it doesn't use heat, but it pressurizes the ink onto the paper. So it will actually stick to things like gloss paper and work like a, um, like a laser without the heat and without the cost of running a laser as well in terms of it does actually cost money to run those lasers because they use heat they are more expensive to fill and that sort of thing so i was determined to get one that uses this durabrite ink but i also wanted an eco tank and this is one of those where you fill up the little tanks with liquid ink and um, you get a lot more pages you can usually get between double to triple the amount of pages printed from filling up these eco tanks so I did a whole heap of research on the weekend and I discovered this one. There were a couple of others, but I discovered this one. This is the one I seem to like the most. So this is an EcoTank. It's actually an EcoTank Pro when you look it up, ET5170. I will leave links in the description. I'll have some for the American Amazon. There will be one for Australia, but you'll be better off using the Officeworks link that's there instead because it's cheaper through Officeworks. And this one I get the best of both worlds. I get Durabrite inks as well as that Eco Tank. So I'm gonna get this one set up and then we're gonna see if I can actually reprint these labels and make them look better. So we've got it all filled up, I've got it turned on, got all the sort of language, time, date and all that set up on there. It's now going to run that ink through, it reckons it's going to take about 11 minutes. I am hoping all the footage that I got of me setting that up has come out okay. Um, I left home this morning um, seeing the charger sitting on the computer desk and thinking there was already a charger down here at the shop for my camcorder and I got down here and I realized no I'd taken it home and that was the one from the shop and I don't know where the other one is at home so there's two two chargers at home and none at the shop hubby's just bought down the charger for the camcorder so I'm back onto that now so the footage should be a lot better a lot clearer so I'm gonna let that go through its stuff I'm gonna go start picking the orders that I got in over the last couple of days and then I'll finish getting this all set up.
Okay, so I finally have everything set up on the printer. I've got it all registered, all the bits and pieces it's asking me for. I have just printed up that um, set of labels. Let's see what happened. Mm -hmm. Not good. Okay, so you can see it's all smeared and not looking good at all. I think I'm gonna have to have a play around with the settings to try and find out exactly how to print on these glossy sheets because that certainly has not worked. Okay, so I've been having a bit of a play around with it. I have worked out there's a little um, tray inside the printer. So when you come down here, the paper was spitting out up here, but there is this little latch here, and if you pull it down, the paper spits out here, which means that it's not running through these rollers and the wet ink smudging. So if I'm printing on gloss, I need to drop that down. The next thing I need to work out to do with it is how to reduce the amount of ink that it's actually putting out because it is still putting out slightly too much so I get some um, streaking on the labels. I have seen so many videos of people printing on this gloss paper um, using this style of printer, using the Durabrites. So I know it is possible, I just need to mess around with the settings a little bit more to try and get it right. Um, it could also be that maybe I just can't print these really heavy um, colours. I know it is possible because the other Epson printer I've got works as an inkjet and prints on gloss paper and it doesn't smudge. So I know it does work, I've just got to get those settings right. But I, as I said before, I've just got to close up the shop for a little bit because I do have a medical appointment that I need to go to. I really do have my fingers crossed that this is going to go well and I will give you an update when I get back which will be just after lunch. Okay, so I am back from the doctors. I think I've managed to compose myself enough. I've been an absolute blubbering mess while I was there. Basically, I went to go and see the doctor about my PCOS. I had a customer come in um, the other week, about a month ago, who advised me of some medication that she was on and I might want to talk to my GP about it. And at first it threw me for six because she was actually referring to all the dark patch underneath my chin here. And at first it, it upset me because someone had made reference to it, but then I also realized she was trying to help me. So I went to see my GP and my GP booked me in to go and see a specialist who I've just been to see today. And for the last 20 years, I have fought to get any help with my PCOS. I have seen doctors who have told me that they don't believe in the syndrome and only the actual polycystic ovaries didn't believe in the syndrome side of it so refused to treat me. I have had found doctors who have then retired and I've not been able to find other doctors who want to help me or to provide the medication and then probably about uh, seven or eight years ago I was told the medication I had been put on I needed to come off because of some other medical history within my family so I've been on and off medication for most of my life with PCOS and I'm at that sort of point where I, I desperately need to get something done so I've just been to see this most amazing specialist and she has listened to me and she's going to help me with my concerns. I have been diagnosed with having, I can never say it, but it's hirtuism. I know some people out there will know what I'm trying to say, but basically you get a abnormal male pattern growth of hair. So that's why my chin is always dark and all under here. And over the years, it has been getting worse and worse and worse to the point now where I actually need to get something done. So that's what I've gone into her to get help with. But what she's actually also offered help for me with is my weight. And this is something I've spoken to many GPs about over the past. I can lose the weight, but I can never maintain it and keep it off. It always comes plummeting back on. And without me even asking her, her because I've actually practically given up asking for help with this, she has offered to, or she's actually given me three month trial of some medication to see if it's going to work to help me get the weight off and keep it off. So the next three months are gonna be very um, telling about whether or not this medication is going to work for me. If I can get that weight off, we can help that 
new tourism as well um, hopefully if we can get that under control the rest of the hormones will settle and everything will start to fall back into place so I am so so super excited so super relieved about to cry again because honestly it's the first time in 20 years I've had anyone actually listen and um, yeah um, but before I get blubbering too much I'm gonna start packing some orders got to get the shop back open up again and um, carry on through this day knowing that um, help is at hand so let's get the doors open and pack the orders Okay, so I am labeling these jars up. Basically, these are jars of things I've found lying around in um, workshop at home. These black ones here that I'm just labeling up, these were jars that I did for a custom order um, back in 2019. Um, they were a custom order that I got. She wanted these black jars, so I got them in, and I was left with half a dozen of them after I completed the order. And I've always been meaning to fill them up, but just have never got around to it. And I've decided that what I'm going to be doing this year is definitely using up all these little things that have been lying around. So these are some of the first I decided to fill up, and I'm filling them up with. Um, fragrances which are going to be limited edition so I've discontinued bubble gum from out of my range I had enough to make up five of these candles so once they're gone that is it is completely gone and I've also made up another candle in a fragrance just to test it a lot of people ask me for this particular fragrance I'm just not convinced it's going to sell well in candles so I decided I would do them as the limited edition and see how quickly they actually sell if they sell out quick then I'll bring them into the main range so that's a good way of actually testing them these clear jars that I've got with the wooden lids these are the jars that I use to do my Halloween and Christmas candles and I had I think a dozen of these left over so I have again filled all of these ones up with those same sort of fragrances so I can see which ones are gonna move quickly so let's get these ones finished label up I'm I'm using the labels that I printed from off my original laser printer I still haven't had time to sit and work out anymore with that new Epson printer it has just been such an emotional roller coaster of a day that I kind of just need to start getting things sorted in here and back into some sort of resemblance of um, organization just to make me feel a little bit better so I figured if I actually start by putting away what is here from the weekend it might make my mind feel a little bit clearer and able to process that everything that has actually happened today because it's all been really really good but it has just been 
such a journey for the last 20 years to get to the point that I'm finally at today. So it's definitely been a long, long journey. And as I said, I just need to start getting my head clear that someone is actually now going to be helping me. So um, I'll get all these labeled up. I also have some refill orders here to label up. And I also have the caramel or salted caramel vanilla is now available in our new look candle jars. So I'm going to get those done and on the shelf. What a strange day it has been. I've got about 10 minutes left before the shop shuts up. So I'm going to start get, getting my things together. I'm going to have to go and do my post office run. I'm going to bring everything in from outside and into the shop and then close up. I did have another bit of a play with the printer because to be honest, the sort of labels I'm going to be printing are just very plain, simple ones. And I figured if there wasn't as much ink on these, they might print better and they definitely have. There is a little bit of smudging still on them, so I just need to see how long I need to sit and um, let them dry and do a little bit more research into how people are actually getting their Epson printers to print on, um, on the gloss paper. It could be because this gloss paper is designed for laser print rather than the sort that is designed for inkjet and laser. So I may actually just have to change um, the paper that I'm using. We'll um, see what happens there. But I do have enough ink left in that laser that I am going to take it home and I'll connect it up to the home computer. And then any labels that I do need to print, I just need to get myself ahead um, and start thinking and actually print them up at home and bring them in. But um, otherwise that print is going to be absolutely perfect for everything else that I do, especially when I'm printing out volumes of um, ingredients and um, recipes and things like that. There's not that many labels I actually print on that printer. I'm about to get all of my small jars and my diffuser jars all professionally printed up as well. So that's pretty much the only um, labels I definitely need to print um, otherwise it's just the refill candles that I usually print up but I'm, I'm gonna think of a way that I might be able to get around that we'll see how that goes um, but as I said for now I'm gonna go and start bringing my stuff in and get ready to go down the post office um, I'm gonna go home and edit a couple of photos that I took over the weekend and get them uploaded and um, then I think I'm actually going to have a bit of a rest tonight because I can feel that I am really, really, really tired from it being so emotional today. But we'll be back in tomorrow. I've just set myself some oils um, just over on the bench here to make some soap dough. I need to make some grey soap dough for a soap that I have planned to make. Um, but first of all, I have to get that soap dough so I can make the little embed. So we'll make that tomorrow and hopefully on the weekend we can make the embed. So I will see you again soon.
<laughs> so what a morning it has been i have got so much done today and i am feeling really really good i did get home yesterday and i made myself a chicken salad and also fed lucy lou and then i decided i actually sat out in the back deck ate my dinner hubby was at work and i was reading my book and then I decided I'm going to go and run myself a bath. So that is what I did. I ran myself a bath while the bath was running because it's a pretty big bathtub that we've got. Um, I got onto the computer. I edited a few photos I actually needed to edit that I hadn't done from the weekend stuff. And when I finished doing that, the bath was ready to pop in one of my Moo Boo Melt Some More bath bombs. I let that go and then I um, jumped in and I think I sat in there for about an hour and a half reading my book and I just felt so good. It was very wrinkly when I got out, but I just felt so good and it's been such a long time since I felt that way. It really has. Just wrapping up some soap bars here. Um, one of the things with having PCOS is that you don't see it, but I am constantly tired and constantly exhausted. I'm constantly feeling like I am wound up. And yesterday was the first time I felt all of that sort of relief, all that sort of pressure and that sort of stuff just let go and it just felt so good and then sitting in the bathtub just doing absolutely nothing but reading my book it just felt i don't know it was just absolutely amazing and i can really actually now see that there's going to be a lot of light um and i should finally start being able to do some of the things i've wanted to do for a long time now but the pcos has kind of really set me back for me, PCOS isn't just about having cysts on the ovaries. There is so much more that goes as a part of the syndrome. In fact, these cysts were perhaps one of the very last symptoms that ever showed up. For years, when I was in high school, I was seeing a GP complaining about all sorts of things, everything from acne which my parents didn't have. I had very, very bad acne as a child. I was tired. Um, I was overweight as I still am now. Um, there was lots and lots of things I went and spoke to my GP about. And I constantly got told I was just a teenager. I would go out of it, my body would adapt soon and all these other excuses as to why there wasn't anything actually wrong with me and I think I complained to him for uh, the best part of oh it must have been five years I went to see him with all of these complaints that were all the same and by the time I got to the age of 21 I was just about to head on over to the UK and I needed to just pick up some scripts so I could actually take them with me and I decided rather than going to see my sort of regular GP who was about 30 minutes away from the house, I booked in to see one of the more local doctors and I walked in to see her and the first thing she said when I sat down is, have I ever been tested for PCOS? And I said, what's that? And she explained what it was and thought that I actually had that. And she sent me off for the test and I did say, I'm going to the UK in a week's time the, she pushed the test through quickly so we got the results and they came back saying that yes, everything showed um, that I possibly had PCOS. And when I got to the UK, I found myself a doctor over there who sent me off to see a specialist and that was when I first got diagnosed and started to get treated and I just felt so much better. Um, the problem was when I got back from the UK, I... The, I went to see the GP again and she said she had to send me to a specialist to actually get um, the medication to be issued to me and she sent me the referral. I went off to the specialist and his words to me, and I kid you not, this really did happen, is he turned around to me and he said, I believe women have polycystic ovaries. I don't believe in the syndrome. I'm not helping or I can't medicate you and it broke me absolutely broke me because I was left with no treatment 
didn't know where else to go. I was still only in my early 20s, so I just, I didn't know any better. And I just kind of gave up. And I went out to Ayers Rock to work and found a English doctor who was working over there at the time. And he, he was really cross. He actually filed a complaint against the specialist who had refused to treat me because of his personal thought that the actual illness didn't exist and he filed a complaint about them. And then he actually did get me medicated, but it's been a very, very long battle my whole life. So PCOS and women can kind of come in many different forms depending upon um, what sort of symptoms you really have. Uh, for me, I did get hit with the weight problem, the insulin resistance, I'm constantly tired, I have um, more male testosterone than I actually should have. Uh, there's just so much more that actually goes with it and as I said, the cysts were a very, very small part of actually having the syndrome and part of that not having the cysts for so long when I actually did get back to Australia was what really hindered being able to get much help at all. Um, but now <laughs> getting that help, so it, it is a huge thing to me. The PCOS is what actually drives me to do what I do now. I get so many people saying, how do you keep going? How do you, you know, find the energy to do everything you do? And basically the reason is the PCOS. Um, I find I found when I was working when we lived up in um, in northern parts of Australia I was fine because we literally lived no more than 20 minutes away from work and it didn't take me very long to actually travel to work oh yay um, so it didn't take me very long to actually travel to and from work and I was seeing the Sun daily and all this other stuff when we moved down to Brisbane, it was taking me an hour and 10 to actually get to work. I wasn't seeing much sun and I was getting really, really, really sick. And my husband said to me, it was time I gave up work and actually started focusing on running my business. So I did that and it's been the best thing. What has been keeping me going throughout the last couple of years and and since I gave up work is knowing that if I go back to work it's going to play havoc on my health again so that's what actually what keeps me doing what I do yes there are days where I don't want to get out of bed but I force myself to and once I'm actually up and up about doing stuff I usually feel a lot better that definitely gonna need the hammer so yeah it, it's hard to run a business knowing that I also have this illness that is never ever gonna go away, but it's so much better than the alternatives of going to work out in the workforce for somebody else. I like being my own boss. So what I'm doing now, I have got these pink Himalayan sea salt bars, which I am just stamping up. I always stamp them once they're fully cured so that I actually get a really nice, clean, crisp stamped look. If I try and do it too soon, um, the bars, although they're hard when you first cut them, they're not hard enough to stamp and you just don't get this nice clean image. So I'm just gonna get all these stamped up. I'm gonna get them photographed because I need, um, I forgot to do that when I first made them and I need to get my photos done for the video. So I'm gonna finish stamping these up and then I'm gonna get them wrapped. Uh, well, I'll take some photos first, then I'm gonna get them wrapped, ready to go out on the shelf.
so that's the end of the day. It is four o'clock Friday afternoon. I am going home. I'm going to go and pop those photos I took earlier today onto the video for the pink Himalayan um, sea salt soap that's coming out my time tomorrow. And then I think I might continue reading my book for a bit. Now, the order that came through earlier on today, that was for um, a soap dough, which is an automatic download. So I don't have to um, go to the post office today. Uh, so that's a nice, nice thing get to get out early on a Friday. But that's it. I am going to go home. And tomorrow, I know I got a notification to say that I got one of my deliveries today. And it's a book that I'm really hoping is going to be good. So I'll see you tomorrow. morning it is Saturday morning it's quite busy outside there's a few people out in the cafe I have come in and I have basically got stuck in to making these custom order soaps I have just made the bergamot and peppermint soap and now I am making the gardener's scrubby soap this is actually going to one of my market friends she makes kokodamas her name's kokodama by mom stop talking then because I had a customer come into the shop and I needed to um, help her out but I have managed to finish the soaps 
These are actually Mom's two favourite soaps that she comes and gets from me. So we've got the Gardener's Soap, which is full of lots of exfoliants like pumice. I put olive stone in it this time instead of apricot kernel and some poppy seeds, plus there's some milk powder. And then this is the bergamot and peppermint, which is a very popular one that I do and it's always in stock. So now that I've got those all done, I actually do need to make some more ladies shaving soap because I've only got one tin of that left. So I'm gonna make some of that today and then just potter around and see where the day takes me. And I've also got to show you the book that I got yesterday. So I'm gonna go and get this mess cleaned up, get the shaving soap started, and then I'll show you that book. So I have had a really productive morning. So we've got the two soaps, I've got the shaving soap just finishing cooking off. It's probably got about another 20 minutes left to go. I have also packaged up the samples for my pink Himalayan salt bar. Just need to pop the, um, the labels onto them and they'll be going out in the orders coming in through next week. Um, I was hungry, I checked the time, it was lunchtime, so I decided to actually sit down and start reading my new book. I've actually just had a notification to say that my other book has been delivered at home as well, so I will show you that one when I get that. Basically what happened was I put out a post over on Patreon about some of my hopes about using essential oils this year and I was asked if I knew of any good reference books and I said that there was one book in particular that I have always wanted but it's very expensive and that was the um, the safety essential oils book I, th I think it's called. Um, it's I'll put links down in the description box below, but when I first looked for this book, it was about $120 for the book. And I've had many books in the past and you get them in and you think, what was the point of paying this much money for books? So I wasn't prepared to pay that much for it, even though everyone in the sort of essential oil industry recommends getting this particular book. But I was just, I wanted to see the book and I couldn't find it in bookstores only through Amazon and Booktopia and all of those sort of places so I'd been putting it off and I had seen it come down in price to about 92 I think was the last time I saw it and I went to go and find the link um, to share the book and I was looking for the link on Amazon and I saw that it had come down to $60 it was just like $60 and so many cents or something and I decided I was prepared to pay that for the book so I popped that into my card and then it came up with another suggestion which was this one 
the A to Z of natural cosmetic formulation and this is put out by the natural um, by the School of Natural Skin Care which I believe they're a UK um, training institute I've seen a lot about them and because it's their book I decided it was just over $20 I decided I was going to pop that into the cart and get it as well and I am so thankful that I did because just the introduction I'm up to page 8 of the introduction of this book and it is just perfect so far it says everything that I keep trying to teach my patrons and um, basically it is saying that you can have in this introduction it, it's talking about formulating and it's saying how you can actually have a recipe um, that you follow but having that recipe is no good unless you know how to formulate why the ingredients are in it um, whether or not the person that's giving you that um, recipe knows the correct ways to actually build that recipe and create it to make it safe and all that sort of stuff and that's something I teach over on Patreon is that yes I do give away a recipe each month but the key behind Patreon is to show people how to actually identify why ingredients are in your products what what you can actually then replace them with I also give a lot of business tips as well so that once you actually have your product formulated you know how to then sell it as well um, and that is exactly what the front of this book has been saying I have a, had a bit of a quick flick through this book as well and it's kind of it really is an A to Z guide and it almost is like a dictionary all the way through of all the different terms that can be used when actually formulating and there is all sorts in here I have seen things about packaging about skin all the layers of skin and what they do different types of skin um, there's things in here about pH what it is how to measure it how to fix it and why it's so important um, there's also things in here about vitamins um, how to or substitutes if you want to make your products vegan um, there is so much in this book just from actually reading it I'm so thankful I've had that in here although I don't necessarily formulate completely natural because I do think, feel there are some ingredients that you need to make a product feel really good um, which are not 100% natural they do have synthetic derivatives in them but I think this book is still going to be my sort of go-to Bible for formulating I've just seen something in there which I'm really interested in as I flip through about HBL values which is to do with how um, uh, which is to do with the water and oil loving components of your formula and how that affects things like emulsifiers and how a formula is actually put together so I do highly recommend having a look for this book if you can get it um, I will leave links down in the description box to that one and I'll also leave links to the essential oil book that I've hopefully is being delivered to the house and um, I will show you that one tomorrow when I get it but this one is definitely um, looks to be a fantastic book we've got something in here about greenwashing explaining what it is gums and thickness how to use them a whole thing about hair about the anatomy of hair hair types and there's just so much in here oh there's even a section here about the heat and hold method definitely recommend this one whether you are new to formulating or whether you have been formulating for a while this one is going to be a really good book definitely recommend it with that being said what I'm going to go do is finish off this shaving soap wrap or label up these soaps and then um, oh I have to make some more room and pillow mist because I've had a run of that off the shelf this morning and I've got one bottle left so I need to go and make some of that all right, so it's three o'clock on Saturday afternoon. I'm ready to go home. Um, I did have a customer come in just before I was about to go out and pick up my flags. So that was a really good finish to the day. Just packed everything down. I've got that book to take home and have a bit more of a read. And hopefully my other book is there. It's Essential Oil Safety. That's the one I was trying to remember. And I have got a notification saying it is at home. Um, so I'll go and have a look at that as well. I have to go and find myself a trolley because I need to take home that big um, laser printer today um, just so it's not sitting in the shop anymore because it's fairly big and it's getting in the way. So I'm going to go find myself a trolley and then I'm going to get go and head home for the day. I'll catch you tomorrow for Sunday.
Good morning, it's Sunday. I'm in, look, it arrived. Let me get the lights on and I will show you a bit better. So, yep, I got home and it was waiting for me on the side. I can definitely see why it's one of those $120 books because it is a hardcover book. So I know it's going to wear really well. Um, there is a lot of information in here. I was having a bit of a look through to see what sort of information I was going to be able to find. And there was something like, you see how big these pages are. There were three pages alone on just peppermint essential oil and how it works. There was just so much information in here and there's a few other things. I haven't had a really good chance to look because I was a little bit busy doing other things last night which I will talk about um, towards the end of today. But um, it's definitely going to be one of those go-to books. Um, my only sort of sad thing would be that there are, from what I can see, no sort of blends. I was hoping that it may have just a few blend suggestions that were different to everything else that was out there, but I'm sure I'll be able to come up with a few of my own um, once I learn a little bit more. So today I'm feeling pretty good, but I am pretty tired as well. With PCOS, tiredness is one of those things that you do, um, do suffer from, and it's not a tiredness that other people experience it's it's really really hard to explain that you know people say when you say oh, I'm really tired oh I know what you mean I didn't get a good night's sleep it's got nothing to do with not having a good night's sleep I can have a nine or ten hours sleep I've slept some days for ten hours and I actually wake up feeling worse than I did um, before I went to sleep and part of it is because your body never really shuts down um, and works I mean your body never shuts down when you, you go to sleep but it actually slows right down and does what it needs to do to help you recover and rebuild for the next day and people with autoimmune diseases their bodies don't tend to actually do that whole slow down process they are still working hard throughout the night even though they're sleeping so they wake up even more tired the next day because their body hasn't actually slowed down to recuperate and I have personally found that one of the best ways for me to try and overcome that tiredness is to have a short night's sleep. Um, last night's sleep was fairly short. I only got about seven hours, but I usually feel I feel at my best after I've had a six hour sleep. So I might try that tonight because um, I am just feeling that little bit of over you can feel it's just so different i can't even kind of explain it people who have got autoimmune diseases will probably know what i'm trying to say and most people have always been um had something said to them about it i remember as a child complaining to the doctor i was always tired and i got the, oh you're just a teenager you'll grow out of it and it wasn't to do with being a teenager it was the pcos that was actually making me tired and it wasn't the same sort of tiredness that I was seeing in my friends. I knew it was different, but um, it, I've always had that sort of thing of people, I'll just go for a nap. It doesn't work. It just does not work. You have to force your body into some sort of shutdown to get it to work. And it's not, you know, taking a day off from work or all that sort of thing. It's really hard to get your body to do it. But, um, we get through it. I've lived with it for so long now that I've learned how to actually deal with that constant tiredness. Today has, I, I, there is some of that tiredness there, but this week, ever since Thursday, I have felt happier. So that tiredness isn't actually pulling me down today. Um, I am extremely happy. Um, and I am hoping that with everything else that we're doing, that some of that tiredness is going to be alleviated and um, I won't feel so tired anymore. But what I've got to do, stop yakking. I've got to go and pop my lunch into the fridge, get the computer set up, get the stuff out the front, get ready for today's trading. As it's Sunday, the markets are on today, so I should be seeing a few, me four, a few, ugh, a few more people come through the shop. Things I have got to do, I've got the custom order soaps to cut. I'm trying to decide how to label the, um, 
Zoom and Pillow Mist that I put out because I can't print my normal clear labels because I don't think it's going to go through the printer. Um, but we'll work it out. Let me go put my lunch away and my bag away and we'll get started. you've not seen me make this week and usually do you see me walking around with my um my coffee cup um just after christmas i decided to finally get myself the coffee machine i've been wanting for ages and um i've absolutely loved it i got myself a breville barista coffee maker and absolutely love it and i've been having a cup of coffee in the morning before coming to work and i generally only have one coffee in the morning and one coffee in the afternoon but this morning because it was an early start i decided um, rather than um, having 10 minutes at home to drink my coffee i'll just have one down here and i'll have one of my fancy coffees tonight so we've got coffee i've got breakfast I have got eight minutes till I need to open the door, so I'm gonna go get my stuff ready to put outside. to actually do about my printer. As I said in earlier this week, I am actually really happy with that printer. It prints up, or the um, the new printer, it does print up really well. I printed up the soap labels and they just look so much better than what my laser printer was printing. It was actually shadowing. Um, so, and it gives me a nice cream crisp look. I still haven't worked out how to get it to print on gloss, but I know it is possible because these labels which we've just printed, they are done on an Epsom 3500, which is a Colorworks printer, and they've printed up perfectly. Absolutely love how these ones print up. This is gloss paper. It works like an inkjet, so there should be a way of actually doing it with that other printer i'll have a, a bit of a play around but what i have actually decided to do is to invest in all the extra labels that i don't have that i was putting through my laser printer and get them to cut um get them to do it on that actual printer which i think at the end of the day it's going to save me space in here as well because rather than at the moment i've got three five drawer paper trays sitting around which i'm going to be able to get rid of most of those once um once i get this whole printing issue sorted out so it's going to give me more space in the shop so it's not necessarily a bad thing um, and then i've also started to design the extra labels that i want professionally printed so um, i will keep working on that um, of a printer to see if i can get it to actually print properly for me um, and i will keep you updated on it but just put all the the lids onto my lady's shaving soap and now it is time to pop my labels on.
Honestly, it's been a bit of a funny day today. We're at that sort of time of year, as I said in my last um, video, where it is really, really quiet. And today is particularly quiet. Um, there's hardly anyone out in the street. I've usually, from my window, I see lots of people walking across the front, getting into that back car park, and I've not seen that many out there today at all. Um, my mum came down earlier and she said there was hardly anyone around and that was about nine o'clock this morning which is usually when it's at its sort of busiest. I've also noticed next door in the cafe they've not had that many people sitting there so it is just generally a really really quiet day so I decided that uh, being a quiet day I'm hoping to get out of here right on time and go home so I thought I will start some of my cleaning processes of what I do every Sunday just to make sure I walk into a nice clean workspace on Wednesday because it's nothing like walking into a clean workspace it really gets you motivated uh, so I've cleaned all out the back um, I've just got to mop the front shop area but I'm not going to do that until I actually close the door because I don't want people actually coming in and then slipping on wet floors so I'll do that one just before uh, I'll bring everything in and then I'll actually do do the floors while I cash up um, but what I decided after I've done that I've pretty much done everything I've been busy on the computer as well um, I basically went through I like the word basically today I went through and I went through all my products and worked out which products I print labels on the label printer and then I worked out which ones I was printing on my old laser printer and I've discovered there's only a handful of products there and the reason I've been putting off doing them on the other printers because the actual papers were so expensive I need a clear clear um, label for some of my bottles so I just I bit the bullet and I went through all the labels that I actually do need to be able to completely use my label printer and no longer rely on a laser printer so I've gone through all of those I've placed the order and that should be here this week and then I'll be able to make up some new um, labels for those bottles there and then I also decided I wanted some more of the clear or the glass beakers um, the lab beakers that you can use to make things. I had an issue before Christmas um, making my pots in my or making my cream in my stainless steel pots. Stainless steel really isn't what it used to be. Um, they say it doesn't rust but it does because we we want things so cheap now that they've actually compromised the quality of the steel by making it thin and then it rusts and I had an issue with one of my creams I hadn't seen that a rust spot had formed in my container and I had to throw the whole batch out because it had got rust in it. Um, so I decided that I actually wanted to um, get some glass lab beakers and I've been hunting around to find ones that weren't like $300 because that's really expensive and I've come across a site today that had lots of different varieties of the glass beakers. And the $300 ones I'm talking like 10 litre jars so they, they are, are big. You can often pick up those glass beakers for you know 5 to $15 sort of thing but I needed the bigger ones so I've ordered myself a 5 litre a two two liters two one liters and then a pack that had all the different like little sizes in so I've ordered all that hopefully that will come this week as well and then once I did that I did a stop and have my lunch and now what I'm doing I'm making as you saw before these cute little koalas um, this will be a video that comes out in February hopefully um, it's one of the patreon design ones where I asked my patrons for a idea to add to a soap and I enjoyed making that sweet serenade soap so much the last time I did um, ask my patrons for an embed to go on the top of the soap. I enjoyed doing it so much I decided to be brave and I would put it out there again and there were some wild and crazy ideas for me to make. They really do like to um, test me and the one that I drew out was to make a koala and um, that's why we made the grey soap dough was to make these little koala embeds so that is what I'm doing now um, I had a bit of a look around for images to see what we could do and this sort of image popped out to me and 
that's what we're now making so I have got 17 more of these little koalas to do and it is about half past 12 so I've got about an hour and a half to get as much of it done as I possibly can and then next week I will look at um, making the soap. Okay, so that is it. Let me show you these little koalas. They're so cute. So here they are. I managed to make eight, so I have another 10. I did put all the stuff um, to make them into my bag. On Monday, I need to make some shampoo bars and some shower fizzes, which I do from the home um, studio because I use the compressor and I don't think it's right to be using the compressor in such a small confined area with the cafe next door and the tattoo parlor on the other side. So I'll do make them at home. And then Monday afternoon, I'll make the other 10 little koalas to go on the next soap. Now my little um, creations don't always come out looking cute when they first start. That was kind of my little prototype if it's gonna oh, focus and he is very 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 rough looking um, but it gave me an idea of how to actually construct the little koalas to make them come up the way they have so I am now ready to go the front's all being cleaned up everything's inside about to turn all the lights off I am actually gonna have a busy week next week um, in terms of personal stuff now um, as I said I bought you along this week and hoping I had no idea it was going to go so well this week in terms of the medical help that I have been given I didn't know whether this was going to be a good thing or a bad thing I just did it on a whim and hoped it was going to be good um, I was so blown away on well not blown away but so emotional on Thursday and I know that so many other people out there, and it's not just PCOS, there are so many illnesses out there that do get overlooked. Um, they're just so complex and doctors try and treat the individual components rather than treating the whole illness as one. Because when you actually treat the whole illness as one, it actually helps with the individual components and then you can start treating those individual bits as well. And it is just so hard finding someone to help you treat that main sort of the whole illness and I know there's so many other people out there who have gone through very similar journeys to what I have gone through so I decided that I wanted to start sharing a part of that journey separate to my business and I have started a new Instagram page called Hope with PCOS and I'll leave links down below so if you do want to follow along with on that journey of me um, where I'm going to go to next um, come and follow along with me over there and that's where I'll be sharing all of that sort of journey and I won't be doing it on my sort of business pages may discuss it on some of the videos but not on my actual business page um, what I have got booked for next week and that will start showing up on this new page I have got my first laser treatment next week um, and I also have to do my first injection at home without um, the doctor there making sure I do it all right so it's going to be a big week for me next week um, and as I said I will be sharing some of that over on the um, the new Instagram page I hope you have enjoyed coming along with me this week and if you have as always don't forget to leave a thumbs up any comments down below it really does help get the videos out there and I do try my hardest to reply to everybody's comments within at least two days these days it's getting a little bit harder to get it done within the first 24 hours but I do get there in the end so if you do leave a comment if you've asked me a question and I haven't come back to you ask it again and it will push that comment back through to me um, so until the next video comes out I hope you have a great one look after yourselves and I'll see you then bye